Hello and welcome to A Word in Season. You know, I love a good story. I love to watch TV dramas and movies and hear the real life stories of people as well. Stories can be wonderful, but they can also be dangerous. You see, stories shape and transform us. They inform us and, uh, and they impact our lives and the way that we relate to the world. Stories can be good, but they can also be dangerous because they, don't, they aren't always accurate and truthful. So we have to be careful about the stories that we watch, listen to, the stories that we read. We have to be careful about the stories that we tell as well. I've heard it said that the Bible is like a community library full of stories, poetry, and literature that informs us about God and his interaction with humanity. James Bryan Smith in his book, The Good and the Beautiful God, indicates that for healthy spiritual transformation, it is critical that we choose the right stories to listen to. He says, no one knows God and the nature and meaning of life more than Jesus. Jesus' narratives are true. So let's take a brief look at one of the stories about Jesus. It's one you might be familiar with about the feeding of the 5,000 plus people. It's found in John chapter 6 as well as the other Gospels, but let's have a look at John's version. The story begins with Jesus having crossed to the other side of the Sea of Galilee and the crowds follow him. They had seen him perform signs and miracles of healing people and they were seeking more of Jesus. Well, Jesus in this more remote area sits down with his disciples on the side of the green grassy hill and sees the crowd coming. He asks his disciples, where will we buy food for all of these people? Philip, very logical and practical, thinks, well, even if we had somewhere to buy food, we would need half a year's wages to feed these thousands of people, 5,000 men plus the women and children. Andrew looks around and he sees a boy with a few loaves of bread and two fish. Not enough to feed thousands of people. But Jesus says, ask the people to sit down. He gives thanks for the boys' lunch and shares it with the thousands of people. In fact, everybody was satisfied. There was enough that there were leftovers and they filled 12 basketfuls of leftovers. The crowd was amazed. I wonder what we can learn from this story. There are five key things that I've thought of. First of all, Jesus saw the need and he had a plan. So often we see our circumstances and make human plans but Jesus sees the bigger picture. He is up higher, he sees higher and further into the future than we do. And he has a plan that we can trust, not our own understanding. Secondly, that Jesus includes children in his ministry. This boy, like so many children in the Bible, were not in a separate room or sitting at a different table. They were included. When the Israelites prepared their Passover meal before they left Egypt. Children were included in that meal. And every year after, children were encouraged to ask questions about this event, this story, and to find out more of who God is and how they fit into his story. Crossing the Jordan River in Joshua 4, the monument of stones was built so that the children would ask about this occasion and God's provision for them. Even the writer of Ephesians chapter 6 addresses children, assuming they would be present as the Christian recipients of this letter. Children were present to participate in the life of the faith community. As Jesus took this boy's lunch, he didn't just teach to the boy, he did ministry with the boy and his lunch. 
You see, Jesus included children in his ministry in a meaningful way. And I have no doubt that that boy will never forget his encounter with Jesus. The third thing is that Jesus gave thanks before the miracle happened. And there was enough, there was an abundance, enough to share with everybody. They were all satisfied. Jesus provided for them. This was a miracle. And um, I love it that, that sometimes God gives us immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. We need to have thankful hearts for that. The fourth thing is about the leftovers. There were enough leftovers that the disciples could continue to be nourished both spiritually and physically for days after this miracle. Be reminded they could continue to chew on um, and to mull over what had happened. And I wonder if we do that. Do we revisit the stories of God's miracles in our lives? Do we retell those stories to our families, to our children? And those children, they're always watching us, listening and imitating us. They need to learn from us about faith. So don't rush past significant moments. The miracles and the times of learning. Reflect, revisit and enjoy the leftovers. And the last point from this story is about the crowds. They were amazed and filled with awe and wonder. Some wanted to continue to have a free meal. They, they thought it was amazing that Jesus could provide for them in this way. Some perhaps wanted to be entertained. Some understood that he was the son of God and continued to follow him and build a relationship with Jesus. Some wanted to harm him. And I wonder what our response would be. I wonder what you make of Jesus. Have you made time to really get to know him? Have you seen his power in your life? Have you seen him heal, provide, forgive, and lead you in his truth? Do you take time to read his stories and get to know him? I hope that this story has inspired you to continue to seek Jesus, to read his stories, to share them with the children in your lives. And as we all journey, people of all ages, as we journey in spiritual formation, I hope that you're encouraged to get to know Jesus as we journey in faith and life together.